With the bunker pretty well on its way, now it was time to concentrate on the trench. I had my shape, now I just needed some height, so I added some more pink foam. As part of the diorama story, a tank is going to go over the trench, so I needed to build a real heavy bridge. With the basics all taken care of, now I just got to add a bunch of dirt. Next I add duck boards, walkways, and stairs. For me, building is pretty organic. I have a pretty general idea of where I want to go, but each element that I add really influences the next element that I'm going to add. A small example is this little waterway that I added just to mitigate some of that water that they had in the trenches. This is the kind of thing that I love. During the build, I had a corner that just had a bunch of space, and so I decided to add something to it. That something ended up being carrier pigeons. During World War I, many forces still used carrier pigeons. Now, I don't believe they would be underground like this. They needed a lot of air movement around them and stuff like that. They actually had trucks that they moved the pigeons around on. But I wanted something for this corner, and um, these seemed to fit the bill very nicely. To further dig my hole with actual World War I historians, I ended up splitting this space and putting storage. So here we have storage and pigeons in a confined area. Probably not the most sanitary thing in the world. Initially, I thought this was gonna be pretty daunting. I, I had set myself up for a bunch of, of sandbags here but honestly, I really enjoyed the experience. I would place them and then sculpt them. Um, they would then harden and then I could put other rows on top and it became a very enjoyable experience all around. As I'm building, I'm adding other elements to the diorama as well. Here's an observation point, a little peep hole there to the left, and I'm also testing out some of the weathering that I'm gonna be doing later on. Early on, I decided to build this in components. So there are three major components. The base, the bunker, and the trench. This allowed for great access to all the different areas that could sometimes get really tight. i just remove a section and I could work on it. Two iconic images come to mind when I think of World War I. The first is the trench, um, but the second has to be barbed wire. I decided to make my own as the examples of photo etch I'd seen online just look like modern day concertina, not actual barbed wire from World War I. In total, I used 90 yards of 30 gauge copper wire uh, for all the barbed wire in this diorama. If you're interested in any of the techniques that I showed today in the video, um, just comment below and chances are it'll make it into one of my future videos for diorama building with scale model craft.